Hi guys, I am Junun Patel from India studying as a marine engineering. Greeting to all the sailors around the world. Hey guys, Jeff here. Welcome back and let's do a top 6 question about Merchant Marine. These questions I get asked a lot. Today I'm going to give more context from an insider point of view. First up, how much do mariners get paid? I get asked a lot, how much do I get paid? It really depends on what type of ship you work on, your company, and a lot of variables. Some of my co-workers have been working in the industry for 30 years, so I've had the chance to compare what other companies are offering. I'll give you a range, all units are in US dollars. Third mate, third engineer, anywhere from 3000 to 7500 Second mate, second engineer, 3500 to 8500 Chief mate, first engineer, they get 4000 to 10000 And lastly, the captain and chief engineer, anywhere from 5000 to 15000 You're probably wondering now, wow Jeff, what's with the big range? Here are some variables. Specialized ships, such as LNG, LPG, they get paid the highest. Container ships, the type that I worked on, is also in the higher range. General rule, the larger the ships, the better the pay, because more work. Bigger company also offer more competitive salary. Nationality. Yes, your nationality and the ship's nationality, aka ship's flag, does matter. There are same ranking officers on the same ship earning different salary because of nationality. Second question, how do I get started in this industry? The bare minimum requirement that everyone needs to work on a ship are the five certificates from STCW95. STCW stands for International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification, and Watch Keeping for Seafarers. The five certificates are First Aid, Personal Survival, Personal Safety and Social Responsibility, Firefighting, and Security. Different countries have slightly different names, but if you want to find out, just look into STCW, Google it, or Wikipedia. Then, in order to be more specific in your position, let's say an engineer, you need a Certificate of Competency in Marine Engineering. For deck side, it will be a Certificate of Competency for Deck Watch Keepers. Maritime is much like airlines. We have to go through a specialized training school, then accumulate sea time, and finally examination for license. You need to research where it will fit you, such as the cost, how long it takes, and the location. The reason why I say location is because for some countries it takes longer. For example, myself, instead of studying locally in Canada, I chose to travel to Australia because it takes 1.5 years less. Plus, I get to go to a new country while studying. So do your research and weigh your options. Okay, third question. Can I get into your company? How do I get into a company? Okay, for my company, I don't have the power or influence to help anyone into my company because I'm only a third mate. You'd have to be a captain to recommend someone. Take it to see Mr. Murdoch. Let's stretch her legs. Yes, sir. Full, Mr. Moody. So sorry guys, I am unable to help you. That aside, here are some advice on how to get into a shipping company. Most shipping company does sponsorship. For example, on the Canadian Shipping Lines website, you'll see a sponsorship under their career section. So go on Google and Wikipedia, find all the shipping lines you can find and start sending your resume. Keep in mind, when you're a cadet, you can be too picky, especially in today's economy. You don't choose the company, the company chooses you. Shipping company hires in batches, so when you hand in a resume, it goes to a waiting pile. Sometimes it doesn't even get looked at. A good strategy for that is to keep sending a resume every month until you get declined. You just have to be persistent. Pirates. Let's just say Captain Phillips happened 7 years ago back in 2009 and since the high profile incident that brought this into the international spotlight, countries from around the world have been tackling piracy by setting out navy patrols into these high risk areas. Most ships also hire security guards for protection. They come on with these big sniper rifles. Piracy is actually decreasing by the numbers. The media tends to dramatize things, especially with the movies and the TV news. Then comes the fifth one, is it safe on ship? Talk about fire, first aid, and maybe accidents. All international ships are fully equipped to fight fire. Not to mention we have firefighting systems in place for almost anywhere on a ship. Lifeboat, life raft, life jacket are all double capacity. We have food, water, and rations too, that can last us for months. Global satellite distress systems that can track us real time. For medical, we have a hospital on board 
All crew are trained in first aid, from the cook to the captain. For more serious conditions, a helicopter can be sent from land and pick up the injured crew. Systematic safety systems and checklists that are in place for a majority of the tasks we do. So it is very safe to work on a ship. Accidents and incidents you see on maritime news are only a small portion of the maritime world. Most people sail for their entire life without seeing an emergency. The last one is internet. Yes, nowadays, majority of the modern ships have satellite internet. Most, if not all, are throttled and have a firewall to block images and videos so that the bandwidth is not spent too quickly. The best available would be on cruise ships. I was on Voyager of the Seas a few months back and they offer a $10 US dollar uh, unlimited internet daily which is pricey and very very slow. Don't even think about uploading or downloading anything. I was barely able to get 360p on YouTube. Bottom line is if you plan to work in maritime, be prepared to have less internet. Uh, thank you guys so much for... Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you got a question, leave it down in the comments below. Be sure to add and send me a greetings on Instagram so that I can use it in the next video if you want to be featured. And I'll see you guys next time.